Hello, welcome to our family room. So you may have seen our media center build on YouTube. It got a lot of views pretty recently. So we wanted to go through the most commonly asked questions in the comments, address all those, as well as go through an entire cost breakdown of how much everything costs. So let's get into it. So one of the most commonly asked questions is what software do we use in the very beginning of the video to do that 3D rendering? And I use SketchUp to do that. It's a free software that anyone can download. And pretty much for all of our builds and designs, we do that at the very beginning before we get to work. That way we can plan out all of the proportions, the scale, the colors, and it really helps out so we're not, you know, Know, chickens with their head cut off while we're in the midst of the build. Yeah, I think for this entertainment center, we did maybe like 17 versions of what we wanted. And I'm pretty indecisive, but Grant putting in SketchUp and seeing all the different color combinations really helps us make sure when we're buying the material and moving forward that it's gonna be something that we like. We were actually gonna do an electric fireplace in the middle originally, which is one of Bianca's like- Most wanted things. Must haves that obviously got nixed along the process. Um, but that was something that we laid out. We didn't exactly like exactly how it looks. So that's why we ended up switching things up and we wouldn't have known that that without having done that 3D rendering. Exactly. Question number two, what are the cabinets called? So these are called Besta, B-E-S-T-A. They're from Ikea. It's kind of a line. They make a variety of sizes and shapes. You can do them without doors if you don't want them, but oh, there's also, I don't know, 30 different door options Yeah, as there, well. were, there were some that were metal, which we kind of liked for a little bit, and then others had like glass panels in them as well, but we really like the simplicity of just like the black wood, the wood grain on it. They actually are really, really nice quality. With Ikea, sometimes it's hit or miss, but we're really happy with how these turned out. Which leads us into another question that was commonly asked, which was why did we decide to go with IKEA cabinets? Some of you may know Grant is very capable of building custom cabinets from scratch, but it actually took some convincing on my part for us to go with the IKEA cabinets. I really wanted something a little bit more simple, and honestly, this was really affordable and really fast, and I didn't want to take six months to build this media center, so I really like the simplicity of these cabinets, and then everything else around them being custom, I think elevates the look as well. That was the compromise that we made. We'll do the IKEA base cabinets, but everything above it was all custom, and I think they blend together really well. It doesn't look like one is kind of a sore thumb compared to the other. All right, the next question, which I can address has to do with the TV. It's what size is the TV? Some people thought it was really small and we did show the box, but in case you missed it, this is a 77 inch OLED TV. It's pretty high end, but I'm kind of a snob when it comes to audio and visuals, especially when it comes to movies and whatnot. So we wanted to go with something nice. So it is 77 inches. It might look smaller, but that's what it is. There are models that are slightly larger at 83 inches, but for five more inches, it was like a thousand dollars more and that wasn't worth the cost to us. Now, the another question was, why didn't we go with a projector? And as you may or may not be able to tell, there's a ton of natural light coming into this room. The whole wall behind the camera is pretty much glass and we have another window on the other side. So I don't think we'd be able to use the projector during the day and just be purely at night. So we wanted the versatility of a TV and OLEDs are known to have low light. However, these ones are high end enough now that the brightnesses and the mid levels are high enough that you have no worries to watch TV during the day. Grant did a lot of research on the TV. So I think we made the right decision. Yeah. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer those. So now we'll get to a pretty controversial question. Why doesn't Bianca work more? So I don't know if some of you know, but Grant works on like our house and then documenting it all and posting it all for you guys as his nine to five, whereas I do work a more traditional nine to five. So most of the time when you see Grant working on this, I'm two rooms over sitting at a computer working. So I can't really do both things at once. So she's just helping at nights and on weekends and I'm doing the brunt of the work. Um, so that's why. I am doing my part though. She still <laughs> helps out a ton. So it, it, it doesn't go, it, maybe not, not fully noticed in the videos, but it's, it was, it's equal effort. And Grant's sure. happy to build these things. Yeah, I really enjoy it. I'm kind of looping Bianca into it, but she does enjoy the finishing touches and all that. So putting up everything on the shelves was a lot of fun for her. Next question was like the height of the TV and the height of the cabinets. So the top of the countertop back here is 28 inches. And then the height to the very bottom of the TV is 37. We've been in a lot of homes where the TV does have an electric fireplace and, or just an actual fireplace and the TV's mounted like basically touching the ceiling and you're just like watching TV like this. So we wanted to make sure it was nice and low and there is a fair amount of space above the TV, but we think that looks pretty cool, especially with the slat wall that we're not worried. And we much enjoy the ease of being able to look straight forward and not have to strain our neck when we watch a movie. Not only did we use SketchUp to help determine the height of the TV, but we also made sure we got our sofa and then hung the TV up again and then looked at the height again because we are really passionate about the TV being at the right height. Yeah. Next question is, what is the black paint color? This black paint color we use on the Media Center, we actually use on a few other projects in our house and it's probably our favorite shade of black and it's Sherwin-Williams Tricorn black. And I'm pretty sure it's just flat black, but that's what they call it. But it's basically the purest black you can get. Another one we like is iron ore. It's not used here, but it's if you want a warmer Char it's like, like charcoal 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 black, it's a great color as well. Iron ore from Sherwin Williams. Speaking of color, a lot of you had questions on what is the finish behind the shelves. As you know, it was Henry's feather finish. And we love this product, not only for the ease of application, but also the price, which we'll share with you at the end. But on top of this, we've applied our fair share of wallpaper, paint, and lime wash. And this is by far, I think the easiest to, to apply and the most forgiving, but it's also 
also the biggest payoff because it's a lot of texture and color and warmth. So we're really happy that we added that to the back of the shelves. Another question is where do we source all of our materials? So I'll quickly rattle things off. TV was from Costco, all of the speakers and the sound system was from Amazon. The base cabinets, as you know, are from Ikea. And then all of the oak, uh, hardwood and oak plywood is from Menards. We used to buy all this stuff from Home Depot, but we always had a hard time finding good quality boards that weren't warped or chipped. So we actually found out from our friends uh, at the LKS address that Menards has great selection of hardwoods, including oak. So we went there and realized everything is shrink wrapped and everything is nice and straight, no chips, and it's pretty good prices. So if you're in the Midwest, I highly recommend going to Menards for any of your hardwood needs. And then all the decor on the shelves is a mix of home goods and world market. We had quite a few trips there. And then the cameras and books you see are from estate sales. We really like to frequent those for some more unique pieces and then all the pictures are of us. And then all of the LEDs and all of that equipment is from Amazon and pretty much all of the trim and the slat wall and all the Yucca board is also from Home Depot. Our second home. <laughs> Another question is why are the lights on different zones and aren't they too bright? So I specifically put them on different zones because there's a thing called voltage drop where if one strip of LEDs is too long, the very end of the strip will start to dim and it won't be as bright as the very beginning of the strip. So for that reason, I put them on four different zones. That way I didn't have any issues with that. And then on top of that, it makes it really nice to be able to turn on and off the lights and dim them separately from each other. So it's each shelf is one zone, the behind the TV is one zone, and the fourth zone is underneath all these cabinets. And then also people are worried about about these shell lights being too bright because you can't technically see them when sitting on the couch. However, because we can dim them, they're actually not distracting at all. And I was actually worried about this, but we put them at like 10 or 20% at night and it's not distracting at all. You can leave them on and it provides just enough ambient light to walk around the room and stuff. The next question is how long did it take? I think on average it was about six weeks. And then there was a variety of, some days it was eight hours of just Grant working on it. And then other weekends it was more or less than eight hours and I was joining as well. And then I know we had a few late nights in there as well, but I would say six weeks. And then on top of that, we're filming everything so that slows things down a lot and also we're not working out every single day we might be out doing errands or social activities and or editing videos and whatnot so we're not working on it completely so it is hard to get an accurate number of days but I'd say six weeks is pretty close and then why do we use drywall anchors to mount all the cabinets people think that this is gonna fall over it's been about a month since we finished it and everything's nice and solid I probably didn't do the best job of it in the video but each bracket holding up each of these cabinets has two GRK structural screws going into studs which is plenty strong enough to hold it. But then on top of that, we also added two drywall anchors per bracket just to be safe. So this thing's not going anywhere. I'm, I'm <laughs> not worried about it at all. So the next question is, where is that sofa from? So we actually had a really long journey of finding the perfect sofa. I really wanted something that looked really nice and Grant really valued comfort. Understandably, we're gonna be sitting and watching the TV. So after searching high and low, we landed on the sofa from Ashley Furniture. I'm not exactly sure of what the name is, but we'll be sure to link it below. But this was a really, came at a really great price point for both the size, the comfort, and it's not super bulky and in your face. So we're really happy with the choice we made. Another question from the woodworking community is, was there any issues with the wood movement by only polying one side of this oak countertop? Normally when you apply wood finish, you apply it to the entire wood. That way, if there is temperature changes, it doesn't cup or warp over time. Now, as you saw in the video, I only did the top and the front and the underside is not polyed whatsoever. I am not worried about this because of how long it is and the fact that it's glued and screwed together. I don't think it's going anywhere. It also has weight from the shelves sitting on top top of it. It has actually gotten significantly colder as the months have gone on since installing it. There hasn't been any issues so far, but if anything does happen, we'll be sure to let you know. All right, so now the question on everyone's mind, how much did everything cost? So we actually kept all the receipts for this, then we just rounded up to the nearest dollar. But starting off with the Ikea cabinets, and this includes five of the Ikea cabinet units. We had an extra door frame to add to the left and right sides, the brackets, the hinges, and then the door fronts. That came in at $625. Next, we have the oak countertop, which was a total of $475. And then all the oak shelves were $325. And then we had the yucca board and shelf backing. So we, we use yucca board, as you saw, to cover up the wallpaper and then by shelf backing I meant the Henry's feather finish and everything to put on top of the yucca and that was a hundred dollars. The slat wall which was just the materials we used one by twos that were pre-primed came in at hundred and fifty five dollars. That could be done for a lot cheaper if you don't buy them pre-primed but we think the cost is worth, worth, our time. worth the time to get them pre-primed. Yeah. They come pretty nice. And then the LED lighting which consisted of all of the LED strips which I think there was four of them, four remotes, the power supply, power cord, and four also receivers for those remotes. Three hundred and sixty dollars. 
dollars. And then the miscellaneous decor. So again, a lot of items from estate sales, world market, home goods, etc. And then plants was four hundred and seventy five dollars. Honestly, the most the most expensive pieces were those two pieces on the top shelves. They were a splurge for us, but we are really happy with how they look. And then we had a lot of miscellaneous building materials. So that includes the finish for the oak shelves and the cabinet, just random tools we needed. We ran out of DRK screws, so we bought more, but just little odds and ends that were kind of used throughout the entire project was one hundred and fifty dollars. And then the most expensive part of this was the TV and the surround sound that came at four thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars. So the, the TV made up about twenty five, twenty seven hundred of that. And then the rest was the speakers, which included the center channel, right, left and right channels, two rear speakers, and then also a subwoofer. On top of that, we had a receiver. nice receiver, an AVR, and then all also all of the wire to run all the speakers to the receiver. So taking all that into consideration, the grand total was seven thousand three hundred and forty five dollars. So that is a lot of money, but over half that was just from the TV and all the audio equipment. So it actually came out to really only twenty seven hundred dollars to just do the build, including all the LEDs and whatnot. So not too bad. But if you are looking to potentially hire this out at one point, it's probably going to be looking in the ten to fifteen thousand dollar range just because all of our labor was free. But if you do do it yourself, you can save a lot of money like we did. Also like four five hundred dollars of that was decor. Very true. But decor adds a lot. But that makes the whole it's needed. project. It's needed. So if you have any further questions, I feel like we answered everything. But if you have any further questions, please leave them down in the comments and we'd be happy to answer them. Now as 2023 comes to a close, Grant is not letting us take a break. So we are hitting the ground running and we are actually starting our bathroom demo tomorrow. The dumpster was delivered and we are so excited for this next project. So make sure you tune in. On top of that, we have a few more things to wrap up with this family room. Some of you already noticed that we don't have any trim for like the baseboards or crown. There is reasoning for that and you will find that out in future videos. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot planned for 2024. And if you enjoyed the video and appreciate the transparency that we provided with all the pricing for the project, make sure to hit that like button. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See, See you next time. time. We're not actually a couple. It's all just for video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready?